Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this tutorial series where I'm showing you how to, you know, become a blockchain developer if you know Python. This is all about Python for blockchain developers. So be sure to check out the previous videos in this series if you haven't already. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you see the next video in this series whenever it comes out. And as always, be sure to thumbs up the video because it really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. And really quickly, if you want to become a highly paid blockchain developer, then you need my online blockchain developer bootcamp which is coming out on May 15th 2019 and you can find out more information on my website at dapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp and I'll put a link to that down in the description below all right so in this video we're going to continue on with our series and you know in the last video we talked about how to you know read information from smart contracts and interact with them and things like that so this video is going to be all about sending transactions on ethereum so essentially, I'm going to show you how to send cryptocurrency on Ethereum with Python. And we're going to kind of go in depth on how that works. So let's kind of just jump right in. So if you go to Etherscan, you know, I showed you this in the last video. But if you look at like these things on the homepage, called, they're called transactions, right? So the blockchain is made up of transactions, right? That's pretty much all it is on, on the at the smallest level from all the records, right? So basically, you know, all the history on the blockchain is made up of transactions. The current state of the blockchain is basically just, you know, some of all the transactions. It's like, that's how you build the blockchain state. That's how you build the state of accounts. That's how you build the state of smart contracts. Things like that is just uh, summing up all the transactions, basically. So whenever you, you send cryptocurrency on the blockchain, it creates a transaction. Whenever you, you know, call a smart contract function or you send ether or whatever, right? Like you're creating a transaction. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to create one of those in this uh, video with Python, with web three. And what we're going to do is basically just show you how a transaction is built. Cause there's several different components that actually uh, have to go into creating a transaction when you're writing Python. And we're gonna just do it in real time and I'll, I'll, watch, I'll walk you through it and we'll see you know, how it happens on the blockchain. So I'm gonna minimize this. And what I'm gonna do, uh, instead of um, you know, talking to the main Ethereum blockchain, I don't want you to have to risk like losing money um, by watching this video and following along the tutorial. And I also don't want you to uh, have any security risks by like, you know, th showing private keys on screen that are potentially sensitive. So I'm going to actually use Ganache, which is a personal blockchain. It's a development blockchain that won't uh, require us to risk any funds getting lost. It won't require us, you know, to really do anything risky from a security standpoint. So basically, we're going to have an in memory blockchain that's going to have Ethereum cryptocurrency on it that's not worth any money. So if you're unfamiliar with Ganache, you can just download it here from the Truffle Framework website. Just click download and install. It's pretty easy to set up. And once you've got Ganache running, you know, it'll just look like this. Um, basically, you'll have um, this right here. And this is going to show you, you know, a list of uh, addresses, accounts um, that are going to have, you know, balances. You can see 100, you know, Ether on each account. And we can, you know, see their address. We can see their private keys, which is what we want in this video. Uh, you don't want to show anyone your private keys for a real account. It's like your password on the blockchain. And that's really risky because that can... Uh, you, know, you can lose you can lose money that way. So um, that's what we're going to use in this tutorial. So first, we're going to connect to our personal blockchain a lot like we did in our uh, previous tutorials. But instead of using an Infura URL, we're going to use a Ganache URL. We'll just say Ganache URL is equal to... Uh, I'm just going to copy the one from Ganache right here. This is just localhost port uh, 7540 files so at HTTP. Call it and I'll paste in that address. And we're going to uh, you know, instantiate our Web3 connection just like we did uh, in the previous videos. We'll say Web3 equals uh, Web3, uh, Web3.http provider. We'll pass in the Ganache URL. All right, and now we're going to print uh, Web3 is connected just to see if this worked. I'm going to clear out all this from the last example, and we're going to run the app. All right, so we're connected. Now we can uh, actually just try to run a transaction, or sorry, just read some more information. Uh, just double check. So Web3 uh, ETH block number. 
think that'll work. Okay, cool. All right, so let's send some cryptocurrency. All right, we need a couple different uh, variables set up in order to do this. First, we need two accounts. Uh, the first account will just be this, account one, paste in some code here. Oops, sorry, let's say account two equals another account. And then we also want a private key. All right, I'll explain why we need all these things in a moment. But first, uh, let's just copy the first account from the list, okay. Paste it in, oops. And then let's copy the second account, all right. And now we want the first account's private key. We wanna show this in Ganache like this, okay. Copy it, and then paste it here. So really this private key belongs to this first account. And what we're gonna do is send cryptocurrency, send Ethereum from this account to this account. But in order to do that, we need a private key to tell uh, Web3 that it's okay that we send cryptocurrency from account one to account two, right? So let's talk about accounts really quickly. You know, uh, accounts are basically like, kind of like your username on a blockchain or your public key is kind of like a username. That's kind of what your account is. And the private key is kind of like a password. So this is sensitive data. You don't want to share this with anybody for a real account. Um, but you know, our private key is basically what allows us to authorize transactions. It's technically called signing transactions. So we can sign transactions uh, in Web3 with our private key um, to let you know the blockchain know that we're authorizing that the transaction is sent, that it's okay to send cryptocurrency from this first account to this second account. Okay, so we need to use this private key whenever we're uh, signing the transaction. We need to sign it before it gets sent off. So here are the steps that we need to execute. We need to basically build a transaction, right? And these transactions that I showed you sort of on the network, um, they have an anatomy that we're gonna go through and build and code in Python. And then we're going to sign the transaction and then we're gonna send the transaction. And then we'll get a transaction hash. And that'll show us that it was successful and we can watch that transaction as it went through. And actually there's a preliminary step here where we're going to get the knots. So I'll explain what that is. All right. So let's actually just build the transaction. First, we're basically just gonna build a dictionary um, that contains all of the transaction information. Sorry, let me change the spacing. Got my text editor set up incorrectly. Um, so first, we need some values here. We need a nonce, which I'll fetch in a second. We need uh, the account that we're gonna send the transaction to. This will actually be account two. All right, we need the from account. Well, from account is actually going to be inferred when we sign it. Sorry. So we need the value. This is going to be the actual amount of Ether we're going to send. And this is going to be, uh, let's just send one Ether. And again, if you saw the last videos where we talked about way, you know, way is the smallest denomination of Ether. Like it's Ether without any decimal places. It's kind of like Ethereum's penny. So we can say Web3 uh, two way. And we can say one uh, Ether. Okay, and we also need to specify a gas limit like this. So gas on Ethereum basically is some amount of cryptocurrency you have to pay whenever you're sending a transaction. That's because you know Ethereum is a proof of work blockchain that has miners on it, and the miners need to be compensated for running the network. And the miners are the ones who actually you know mine the transactions. Uh, that get included in the blocks, that get written to the blockchain. So basically, we, we, say, we specify a limit for how much gas we're willing to pay. This is, um, this is not actually Ethereum. This is just units of gas, which is an, kind of an abstract concept in itself. This is not tied to, um, you know, uh, not tied to any cryptocurrency. Think about it like gallons or liters of gas in your car. It's just a unit. And then you multiply that by gas price, okay? 
And then so it's like saying, you know, if I want to fill my car up with 100 gallons of gas, that just be that would be 100 gas. And that would say, you know, I pay, you know, a dollar per gallon, right? And that's how you get the actual total amount. So I say Web3 two-way, um, let's just say 50 uh, guay. So guay or g-way is just uh, a larger denomination of way. It's smaller than Ethereum, though. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need in order to build the transaction. This is sort of the anatomy of the uh, transaction object or, or the dictionary in this case. Um, but we need to get the knots. So what does the knots do? Well, the knots basically prevents you from sending a transaction twice on Ethereum. It's kind of based on your account's uh, transaction history and the number of transactions you've created already. So we can get the knots like this. Um, say web3. Uh, say get transaction count and we'll say account one all right we'll build the transaction all right so that should give us everything we need to complete this transaction uh definition in this dictionary say nonce all right and then we're going to sign the transaction like this we'll say signed tx i'm actually going to remove some of these code comments so that we can have more space at the bottom of the file here and then we'll say um, Web3 ETH uh, account sign transaction. We'll say TX and then private key. So we need to basically sign the transaction by passing in the actual transaction that we built here. And then we need to pass in the private key to let us know that, you know, account number one is authorizing this. And it's going to know it's account one. It can rebuild the entire account from the private key. We don't actually have to pa pass in like, you know, this at all. Uh, we just need to do that for the transaction count. Now we can uh, actually send the transaction. We'll get the hash back like this. We'll say web three uh, send raw transaction okay signed and then we'll say raw transaction okay so then we can get the result which is going to be a hash and we can print uh the result all right so let's try this. I might have made some mistakes, but let's just run the app and see what happens. All right. No, it actually worked. <laughs> First time. Awesome. So if you look at Ganache, you can see that one Ether was actually transferred uh, from the first account to the second. So how is that? That's awesome. So boom, it worked. But if you go back to uh, our, uh, our terminal here, you can see this looks kind of funny. So we can actually convert this uh, to hex. We can say web3 to hex, all right? And then run it again, and boom, there's a transaction hash, and we can see it actually <laughs> uh, in a you know more readable format. So if you go to transactions, we can see that same value here. All right, awesome. So you could do the same kind of thing on the main net or on a test network if you wanted to. You could just you know take this transaction hash and uh, you know, look at it on Etherscan. But yeah, there you go, guys. That's how you build a transaction in Python and send cryptocurrency with Web3 and Python. Again, you could do this on you know, the main Ethereum network, but for the sake of this tutorial, um, I didn't want to expose any private keys. Uh, I want to make this as easy as possible. Um, and yeah, I didn't want you to risk like losing your money, right? Cause this is serious business. If you've got, you know, any amount of funds, uh, you want to be very careful. So I hope y'all like this video. Again, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the thumbs up button down below. And also don't forget about my blockchain developer bootcamp, which is coming out on May 19th. Uh, sorry, May 15th, 2019. Um, so if you're watching this video after that date, it's already out. You can find the link down in the description below. So I hope you all are excited with the boot camp because I'm very excited. Um, again, I hope you all like this video. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.